Hey guys, I'm so excited. Today I'm at my friend uh, Beauty by Allison. She is an esthetician, lash stylist. Um, she offers an array of facial services, um, microdermabrasion, dermaplaning, which is what I'm getting done today, uh, waxing, lash lifts, lash extensions. Um, she off offers all these services here in Austin and she is uh, going to be performing microblading on me, which I've never had done before. And not dermaplaning, <laughs> microblading. <laughs> <laughs> Dermaplaning. We're doing microblading twice. <laughs> it's this new thing. It's like a hybrid of microblading and dermaplaning. No, I'm getting dermaplaning done today. Um, and we'll go into a little bit more about what that is. Um, but she was nice enough to let me bring my camera and document the whole thing for you and uh, pick her brain, ask her questions because I've never had this done. But from what I know about it, it sounds pretty awesome. And I think it's something that you guys would like to learn about um, and just kind of see the whole experience. So I'm going to introduce you to Allison. Say hey, hi, everyone. Allison. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, if you are in the area, um, I'll leave all of her information down below. Um, but let's go ahead and get into like kind of the frequently asked questions, like what is dermaplaning, all that. I'm going to turn the camera to Allison. Okay, Allison, so tell me what dermaplaning, not microplaning, <laughs> dermaplaning is. Uh, okay, so dermaplaning is where you use a surgical scalpel blade, which seems a little bit scary, but I promise it's not. Obviously, it's not something you'd want to do at home on yourself, but going to a trained professional, it's a it's a, a, a more aggressive form of a superficial exfoliation. So if you're familiar with a microderm, it works similarly as it targets the epidermis of the skin. But rather than using suction and crystals like a microderm would, the blade is just stroked along the skin very gently in a 45 degree angle, and it removes dead skin cells, all that bellus peach fuzz. So if you have women who have just excess facial hair, it's really, really great for them. I it's think just, I think that's what I'm most excited about is, you know, yeah, I don't have a, an excess amount and no one really probably notices it when they're looking at me. But when I apply my makeup, mm -hmm. I'm noticing that the heavier foundations that I wear, the more it accentuates it sticks, that. Yeah. Right. So that's one of the best if, because if you're, if you're going to distinguish between both of them, I mean, dermaplaning, if you've got very acneic skin and you're breaking out, you have open wounds, it's not something that you want to do. Obviously, you don't want to be running a blade over it. But if either option, you're a candidate, or um, dermaplaning is also really good for people who have rosacea because the suction in microdermabrasion is just not, it's not the best thing for it. Uh, it just kind of depends on how aggressive your machine is. Um, the, one of the, the biggest thing with it, though, is that it's, your makeup applies flawlessly because you have nothing on your skin. It is a little interesting if you've never had it done before in applying your makeup afterwards because you're used to this glide. Uh -huh. And it, it's almost like sticky oh, because there's you're... no hair that does it. So uh, that was probably when I, because I obviously I do it, so I had it done because I'm like, well, I don't really know what this feels like. Mm -hmm. And that was probably one of the big things I noticed is that that glide that you normally have with your hair is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so applicate, but application, it just applies flawlessly because you don't have... And in here, there. Apply less, also. Yeah, I bet. You just don't have to use as much to cover, and it doesn't look as cakey. So it's really great to do before events. It's really great to do, <clears throat> excuse me, just in general if you're just wanting to have youthful, radiant skin. I would but, imagine that removing that dead layer of skin, your skin just glows afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Like there are, we've done treatments on people before that have really bad pigmentation, and we've done stuff to target it, but it's all just kind of sitting there in the epidermis, and then we go and we do dermaplaning afterwards and it's like it lifts it off. It's really quite amazing sometimes the results that you get with certain people that just feels like a baby's butt. Yay! Well, I want that feeling. Yeah. Okay, so kind of the, um, well, so how long does the appointment take? It usually takes about 30 minutes, um, up to 45 if you're going to get a light peel afterwards. So I always like to do combo stuff. So I do micro peels, dermaplaning peels. Um, particularly with dermaplaning, you, because we have removed everything, it's not just dead skin cells. We've also taken off all of that hair. Products penetrate so much better than really anything else out there. So you can do something really, really light. Now, sometimes when you say peel, that will freak some people out because they think, you know. Red face, burning, mm -hmm. yeah. Super, um. What was the character on Sex and the City? Samantha. Who, yeah, she went and got, it's not like that. I mean, there are varieties of peels. Like they don't start there. They start very, very basic, Mild. like enzyme, enzyme type peels, which essentially just brighten the skin. They don't peel you at all. So you can combine stuff like that. So if you did that, usually it would take a little bit longer, particularly if it's a timed type of peel, but about thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Okay. And what is the service range? Uh, as far as price cost. Wise, uh -huh. So I have seen it as low as like $35, depending mm -hmm. on if you're going to like a school or something. I would say the average, it usually probably sits around 75 to 100. Um, it's pretty affordable. And how often do people like to do it? 
Usually I would say six weeks would be if you're wanting to keep the hair to a minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're wanting to do it more for an anti-aging boost as well as the hair, I always recommend once every four weeks. And the reason is, is that your cells naturally turn every 28 days. And so what we're doing is we're going in and forcing the skin to do naturally what it already does, but much more aggressively. Mm -hmm. So we really, really counteract what's going on with gravity and pollution and just lifestyle, sleep, sleeping weird on your face. Yeah, all those things mm -hmm. that you don't even realize are aging right. you, right? Forcing that collagen to turn over yeah. elasticity. So um, I, my recommendation is always four weeks, but if you're on a budget or you don't have time, I would say probably don't wait any more than two months. The two month mark, you're pretty much back to normal. Back to baseline. And a lot of it depends on how quickly your hair grows, but generally about six to eight weeks is would be pushing it but i think the average person probably comes every six weeks six weeks okay yeah. good to know all right so what are we going to do first uh so first i'm going to cleanse your skin okay i use an oil-based cleanser uh some people will use cleansers that strip so that will have a salicylic or something like that in it i personally don't like to do that you have something on the top layer of your skin called the acid mantle and that's naturally secreted um, acids oils and fatty acids I find that the blade strokes much better, and you can actually see the blade removing some of those oils, mm -hmm. um, but I find that the blade strokes better and the hair comes off easier with having the acid mantle on there. Also, when you strip the acid mantle, it uh, your, your pH balance is also adjusted, and in doing that, you get, it takes anywhere from like four hours to 14 hours for your body to rebalance with, with its pH. Okay. So anytime you can just leave that and let the body not have to correct a bunch of something that's unnecessary, I like to leave it. So I do a gentle cleanser. Uh, I use the Mad Hippie line. Okay. So I usually will do a double cleanse with this. And you guys sell this product here, I right? do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I sell the whole Mad Hippie line. I like this line just because the ingredients are more natural and okay. the less toxins you can get in your body the better. better. <clears throat> so cleanse first, um, then we dry the skin, then we do the dermal planing. I always finish with a hot towel and then moisturizer and sunscreen. Okay. Um, after the hot towel would be where the peel that we were going to do one would go. Okay. Are we going to do the peel today or? If you want. Like okay. It. Sure. Why not? Let's show it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I came here makeup -less. Um So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the... So the end of this, this part right here, just comes out of this package and then snaps on there and then there. So it's not a blade you ever reuse? Nope. Okay. So you put in a sharps container. Now there are ones where the, like this will be plastic, mm -hmm. this end, and the whole thing is disposable. Um, I feel like those are a little less eco-friendly, so I use these, that way it's just, just the blade. this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go and start. You ready? I'm ready, yeah. So you don't put anything on the skin at all, like a moisturizer or like any prepping gel or anything? So some places will actually, depending on the cleanser that they use, will put an actual an oil on, like argan oil or maybe even almond oil, and they will stroke with that. Okay. Because of the cleanser that I use, I don't need to. Okay. Um, yeah, the cleanser feels super hydrating. That's really nice. It feels very comfortable. It kind of just feels like I'm scratching my face with mm -hmm. my, you know, my fingernails like I'm an itch or something. So there is no like, correct way in how you angle the blade. I mean, generally with dermaplaning, you go a little bit against the grain of the hair, so. When you shave at home, and a lot of people don't know, they're supposed, you're supposed to shave with the grain of the hair. 
-hmm. That's one of the ways you prevent razor burn. Yeah. With dermaplaning, you actually go against. So not everybody's hair grows in one uniform fashion, obviously. So sometimes yeah. you have to get a little creative and like angle the blade differently. There you go, and focus what's removed on the blade. So that's All hair. Like primarily, it's a little bit of hair, mostly no um, dead skin cells and like residual oil. So on a scale of one to 10, how hairy am I? <laughs> oh, you're like a two. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Some people I have a really good time doing their dermaplaning because they're just oh, yeah. a lot more natural facial hair. This area right here is usually the hairiest mm -hmm. on people. Lip waxing, uh, I break out every time I've ever had my lips waxed or threaded. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like to do it. Okay, so we've done the right side of my face and we're going to move on to the left. Um, it, wow, darn, it feels so smooth. Um, it didn't hurt at all. It just kind of felt like I just had a scratch and I was kind of scratching with my own nails. So very, very painless, very comfortable. Um, but let's go ahead and start. With the other okay, side. Look at all this hair that just came off the side of my face. This is really gross. Ew. Can you see that? Ew. <laughs> it's peach fuzz it's for you. Peach fuzz is fuzzy. Wow. Okay. Okay, so we're done with the dermaplaning portion. Um, I mean, my skin doesn't even look irritated or red at all. It doesn't actually. Yeah. There's usually a little bit of pinkness that comes along with it, but it subsides pretty quickly. Yeah. It feels so soft. Wow. So what are we doing next? I'm gonna do a hot towel on you. Okay. And then I'll do a peel. All right, well, I'm gonna see you guys in a minute. Okay, so we're about to do the appeal, which I have actually never had done. So I don't know what to expect. But so this is just a 30% glycolic. Um, the molecules are very small, so they travel very far and deep. Um, so when you're doing these, like you wouldn't wanna get, you know, like right here under the eye oh, okay. because they'll go up so they're nice because they travel a little bit and they are smaller it's pretty much safe for all skin types so it's usually if you've never had a peel with me before this is what you start with unless it's you if you've like purchased an aggressive peel and that's what you want this is usually what i will start with just to kind of gauge and see now if you are diabetic or you are allergic to sugar you can't use this and i'll use something else but that's not the case for most people so okay ready yep If you need the fan, just let me know. Ooh, I feel that. How long does that usually last? Mm, it usually subsides pretty quickly. Yeah, I can feel it subsiding already on my forehead. But I guess because we just did the dermaplaning, it's more sensitive. Yeah, so it's just going to penetrate a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. And so what does the peel do physically to the skin? Um, so this is a chemical exfoliant versus the dermaplaning, which was a superficial physical exfoliant. So this is actually going to penetrate into the skin mm -hmm. and it's going to go down further into the epidermis and help stimulate cellular turnover. It's going to help shrink and shut down the pores. So it's going to tone, it's going to tighten, it's going to oh, help okay. exfoliate chemically. So usually when you come and get a service done, about a week or so later when you feel like, Oh, my skin is just still so radiant. That's the chemical peel. Got it. Okay. So the initial, this, that kind of glowing, radiant, vibrant look that you have to the skin is what we've done superficially. And then as time goes on and you start building up a dead skin cell layer again, this is what's helping to turn those cells over. Got it. Okay. So then she just removed it with, I guess, a wet kind of cloth. And then we're just moisturizing and putting sunscreen and we're done. What kind of sunscreen do you like? So I have been using the Mad Hippie sunscreen. It's not tinted, which is, I was using the Elta MD. Mm -hmm. So I do miss that about it, but it smells heavenly. It does smell good. And That's what you're applying now. Mm -hmm. It's natural. Okay, so we're all done. My skin is just like so radiant and glowing. Let's see if I can find this one light. Um, and it feels amazing. I, my skin has never felt 
skin has never felt this soft before. You're not even that it's red good. either. It's nice. No, a little pink, but not red. Um, okay, well, I'm so excited to put makeup on yeah, and me too. see how this looks. All right, well, thank you so much, Allison. Yeah. All right, you guys, I'm going to leave all of Allison's info down below. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and informative. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.